Hello everyone and welcome back. Uh, I haven't made a video in a while and I've received some requests to do so. Um, so I will. Uh, if you recall our last tutorial, um, we made a program quite similar to this. Um, said hello world. We got some input using the sin and then we did some output using C out. Um, in today's tutorial, I want to go over an introduction to functions. What exactly is a function? Um, how do we use them to be useful? What's their purpose? Stuff like that. Uh, we'll start by examining this Hello World application right here. You'll notice that it just starts out, we do these uh, standard includes using namespace std, and then we have this int main um, and then these squarely bra brackets here. Um, now, this part right here is the main function. Uh, and if you know anything about uh, programming, if you have any prior knowledge, you should know that every program always starts with the main function, especially in C++. No, no C++ function or program starts anywhere but the main function. And essentially, what the the main function is is it starts in the first thing this program does is it prints hello world. It's the first part of execution. Then it just linearly goes through every line of the program until it reaches the return zero and the end squarely brace of the main function. Anytime a program in C++ reaches that point it will close. Everything that a program does happens in this space right here. Absolutely everything. Nothing can ha happen outside of that space. It can happen in another, like, it can happen in another file, but it's still running within this main function right here. So, a function is essentially a line of execution that does a specific thing. So, our main function is generally classified as where it's the parent function of everything else. Any other function that you make is called from the main function. Um, so, if you had to guess how to create another function, you'd probably say it looks a lot similar to this, and you'd be right. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create another function, and it's done in very much the same way. Um, so we're going to create a function of type int, just like our main function. We're going to call it my first function. So if you remember anything from the last video, right now that looks a lot like int input. But the unique thing about a function is instead of putting a semicolon, we're going to put opening and closing parenthesis. Then we can either start a new line or put this on the same line. Opening squarely brace, leave some space, ending squarely brace. Now this is our function. Now what you do with a function is you call it. And the way you call a function is we go down here, and I'm, I'm just going to delete everything uh, from our Hello World app, and just call my first function. To do that, we just type my first function, then the opening closing parenthesis, and then our semicolon. So what this, this is doing is when you start the program, it goes to the main function. First thing it does is it's going to go, oh, my first function. What is that? Where is that? And it's going to go, oh, I, I compiled this up here. It's my first function. Let's type int. It's going to say nothing. Actually, we need to do return zero. I will explain that in a second. But we are going to have to have that in there. So it's going to go my first function. Return zero. Done. Okay. So let's run that and see what happens. Nothing. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted it to do. So now, if I go into my first function and type C out hello world semicolon, I'll expect that main function will start. It will call my first function. I'll go up here. It'll print hello world. My first function will return. And what a return is is it a return essentially says go back to the place where I where I came from wherever that may be in the code so in this case it's going to return 
to the right here and it's going to continue executing the code sequentially. The int specifies that it will return a variable type integer. So we could change the 0 to 1, 10, 1002, it doesn't matter. Whatever it is, as long as it's an int, it will return that. So in the future we can use this to create a function that's, let's say, uh, if you're creating a game, get health. And get health would be return type integer. It would look through our code and find where the health variable was and return health. And it'll be an integer. And then we can use, so we could set my first function equal to int value. So after, now to step through this again, main function opens up, says int value is equal to my first function. That means I need to go to my first function and see what it does. My first function, the first thing I need to do is print hello world, then return zero. We're going to go back here. This entire thing is substituted with zero. So then the compiler reads int value equals zero. Great. So now we'll see out value. So what I expect this program to do is print hello world, then the same line, zero, and then the system pause message. Let's try it out. Hello world, zero, system pause message. Excellent. Um, so I, I hope by now you're, you're starting to get a feel of how the a function can be used and just the, kind of the general concept of a function. So we're going to make this a little bit more complicated here. And we're going to make an addition function. So I'll, I'll leave that as my first function just for simplicity. So in these little parentheses up here in the declaration, by the way, this is called the declaration of the function. You are declaring it here. Uh, well, actually, more specifically, this is the declaration of the function, and this is the implementation of the function. The declaration is, I'm declaring it, int my first function is a function. And then the implementation is, int my first function does that. It's implemented to do this. So in these parentheses, I'm going to add int value 1, comma int value 2. So what this is saying is integer value 1, integer value 2. And what that says is this my first function will now take two parameters or arguments, whatever you'd like to call them. It would be an integer 1 and an integer 2. And the way we s implement that down here is we say my first function 1, comma, 10 two separate integer values. Uh, it's important to note here that if I only gave one or none at all and tried to run it, I'd get a compiler error saying too few arguments in the function, which means it's an int int, so it wants an int int. Um, there, there are ways to get around that, but that's a little bit more advanced than where we are now, and we'll talk about that in a later video. But for now, we'll do my first function, 1, comma, 10. So that's going to pass 1 and 10 to this function. So then, in the local scope of this function, when we say value 1, we're going to be re referring to whatever this value is right here. When we say value 2, we're going to be referring to whatever this value is. And when I say whatever this value is, I mean whatever in, when we called that function that time, what did we pass it? So I'm going to say value 1 plus value 2. I'm going to say copy and paste that there and get rid of our hello world. So what I've just done is create a very, very basic one line addition function. So it's going to take value 1, it's going to say, oh, value 1 was 1, plus value 2, oh, value 2 was 10, 
1 plus 10 is 11. So this part is now going to become 11. The int value is going to be 11, so I expect it to print 11. And it does. When you look at that, math still works. Um, just as, as a little challenge for you guys, I'd appreciate it if you tried to make multiplication and division functions. Um, and just use use what I've taught you here to try to make a, a basic calculator. You have everything you need. Uh, in the next video, I think I'll actually go through and show you how to make a calculator so we can kind of compare what you've done and what I've done and, and see if there's any uh, thing that we can improve or whatnot. So I'm going to say goodbye and good luck and happy coding.